Hey, welcome everybody. We're going to continue working today with the binomial distribution. And you've learned how to calculate probabilities using a binomial distribution. What we're going to do today is we're going to focus on expected value and the variance and standard deviation of a binomial distribution. All right, and you'll be able to calculate the expected value of a binomial distribution and you'll be able to calculate the variance and thus the standard deviation of a binomial distribution. There are some formulas that we need to talk about first, and these are among the easiest formulas that you're going to see anywhere, probably. Especially the first one is just so logical. All right. If we have a random variable x that is binomially distributed with a mean, sorry, with a number of trials n and a probability of success p, the way you calculate the expected value, which is also the mean value, if you recall, is pretty straightforward, honestly. Now, let me give an example and then show you how it works out. In a binomial distribution, let's just say that you expect 75% of the time that you would have success for whatever random variable you're talking about. Well, if the probability of success is 75% and there are 100 trials, your expected value, your expected number of success, successes would be 75. What I'm telling you here is that to find the expected value in a binomial distribution, all you have to do is take the probability of success and multiply it by how many trials there are. All right? So n times p gives you the expected or the mean value of a binomial distribution. Very simple, right? Okay, then variance of a binomial distribution is also a simple formula. Again, we have a random variable x that's binomial distributed with the Number, n number of trials and p chance of success. Well, if you recall, variance is supposed to measure how far a data value is from the mean. And you also remember as a relationship with the standard deviation I'll mention in a second. Turns out all that you have to do to calculate that in a binomial distribution is calculate the mean value and multiply it by the probability of a failure in our success failure binomial scheme. In other words, n times p, which remember is the mean value, times q gives you the variance of a binomial distribution. Now you know what n and p stand for? What q is, is the probability of failure. And of course in a binomial distribution, q is always equal to 1 minus p because the chance of the success plus the chance of the failure has to be equal to 100%. All right. So that's how you calculate expected value and variance. And then standard deviation, if you recall, is the square root of variance. So we could say sigma equals the square root of the variance of x. All right, you learned way, way back in the chapter on statistics that we learned. Okay, so let's put these into practice. Let's say that a biased coin is tossed 80 times. And the likelihood that it shows tails is 65%. So more heavily weighted towards tails than it is towards heads. We're going to do a few things with this, beginning with finding the expected value of x. All right? Then we're going to find the standard deviation. Then we're going to find the probability that the random variable x, the number of successes, essentially, is greater than the mean. All right. Well, 80 times the likelihood of showing tails is 65%. How many tails would you expect out of those 80 tosses? Well, it's simply going to be 80 times 0.65, which is 52. You'd expect 52 tails in that distribution. Okay, now the standard deviation. Well, the standard deviation is the square root of the variance, so we want to calculate variance first of all. And variance, if you remember, is n times p times q. So 80 times 0.65, or in other words, the mean, we already know that value is 52, times q, which is 1 minus p. It's the probability of a failure, remember? So 52 times 0.35, or 18.2 is the variance. And so then the standard deviation sigma is gonna be the square root of that, and it's gonna be approximately 
4.3. All right. Now, finally, we're trying to find the probability that x is greater than the mean. Now, a couple things I want you to think about with this. I'm trying to drill in your head a little bit that expected value and mean are the same thing in a probability distribution, not just a binomial one, but any probability distribution. That's true. So when we calculated the number of tails that we were expecting to see out of 80 tosses, that is our mean value. Really, then, we're trying to find the probability that x is greater than 52. Now we're going to have to use our calculator for this. Keep in mind that whenever you're trying to calculate binomial probabilities on your calculator for not just a specific value, but for a range of values greater than or less than a value, you have to use the binomial CDF function. But it will tell you what the probability of getting up to a certain value is, not what the probability of getting greater than a certain value is. So we're going to have to use the complement of the event. Instead of saying we're going to find the probability that x is greater than 52, we're going to do 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 52. All right, so you know to use binomial CDF in order to calculate this and plug in 80 for n, 0.65 obviously for p, and then 52 is going to be the r that you plug in there. All right, see what you get. All right, and it turns out that there's about a 45.8% chance here that the number of tails would be greater than the mean, so that you'd get 53 or more in that sample of 80 coin tosses. Very good. All right, so that's all there is to calculate, calculating expected value, variance, and the standard deviation. Now, let's do one more example, which is kind of in reverse. In this one, the information, type of information I've given you is different. It says in a golf tournament, the expected number of players who will break par is 7.2, and the variance is 6.336. And we're going to find three things, the value of n, the value of p, and then the probability that x is less than or equal to 5. Oh, now, here I gave you the mean, or the expected value, and I gave you the variance, we're going to work backwards, essentially, from what we just did in order to find out what is the number of trials in our sample, the number of players in this golf tournament, in other words, and then what is the probability that one of those players will break par. Okay, that's what our random variable would be here, is the number of players who broke par in this tournament. All right, well, let's take the formulas for variance and for expected value and put those to use here. All right, you know that the expected value of x is found by multiplying n times p, and that's equal to 7.2 in this case. But we know neither n nor p right now, so that's not super helpful to us quite yet. Now we also know that to calculate the variance of x, you multiply n times p times q, but in this case, in order for that to be able to help us, I want you to keep in mind that that's really the expected value times q. So, here's where we're going to be able to find any values for n and p. What we're going to do is we're going to replace the variance of x with its given value, 6.336, and then since we know that this quantity right here is the expected value, we can go ahead and replace it with 7.2. And with that, we're going to be able to find out what the value of Q is, which, remember, is the probability of a failure. And thus, in this case, it would be the probability that a golfer in this tournament does not break par. They shoot above par. All right, so let's figure out what Q is equal to. And it turns out to be a pretty high failure rate for this. 0.88, 88% is the likelihood that a player will fail. All right, well... With that, then, we can immediately infer, well, or calculate, actually, the value of P. It would be 0.12. And then once you know the value of P is 1.2, you can go over here and substitute. Say 7.2 equals 1.2N. And you figure out that N is equal to, I'm oh, sorry, 0.12, not 0.1.2. 0.12N. And you figure out that N is equal to 60. So there's our two values. We figured out n equals 60 right there. And we figured out that p is equal to 0.12. All 
All right, so very easy to use the variance in mean or expected value in concert to find the values of n and p. Now we're going to find the probability that x is less than or equal to 5, and, well, you can just type that directly into your calculator in the binomial CDF function. You now know the values of n and p to plug into that. Go ahead. All right, so what we've ended up with here is we figured out that there's a 0.259 chance that five or fewer golfers in this tournament will break par. All right, that's using expected value and variance and standard deviation. Thanks for your attention. As always, hope this has made things a little bit easier for you. See you next time.